Hi Darkroom Booth users, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we are going to work with graphic lists. This is what allows us to change a background graphic or even a foreground graphic from our screen template and apply it to our live view and also to the print template or the output template. We're going to build one from scratch and it's going to output to a strip so you'll have different backgrounds to select and then it will print the same background on all three images on a photo strip. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we'll do is create a new event. And then I'm going to start with my screen template and we're going to click choose. And we're going to start from scratch, so we'll go ahead and click New. And I'm going to set my resolution to Full HD based on my monitor. And we'll give it a name. And I'm going to leave the background color and text color all, uh, all default. And then I am going to next add artwork. We're going to choose graphic list and then edit. And this name is really important. Whatever you use here, you want to use it across all the um, objects that are going to be used in the graphic list, the buttons, the actual live view, the previews, and the backgrounds on the print template. So whatever you use here, you want to make sure that it's exact and that if you retype it rather than copy and paste, um, that you type in it exactly the same way. So we're going to click add and I have a folder on my desktop with three graphics. Click OK. The next thing we'll do is add our live view and set it to chroma key. Here's a little trick. If you uh, have your live view selected and hold down control and then click on the graphic, it will then check both of them and highlight the graphic. If you right click and you make the same position and size, they'll, they're now uh, overlapping right on top of each other. So the next thing we're going to do is click um, Add Artwork and browse to graphic number one. And we'll set a booth command of um, choose graphic. And the list is background. And this is where it's really important. Uh, that that name is exact. If for some, for some reason it's not working for you, go back, copy the text, and paste it in. Um, but here we're going to have the index set to 1. And we can go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Move it right here. And these will actually be our buttons to change the background. So I'm going to do copy paste paste and double click on this one and change that to a 2 and to index number 2 click OK and OK and then do the same thing for this one number 3 and index number 3 okay and I'm going to select both of those and just move them down just a little bit and then just select number 3 and now I have my three buttons that will change the background. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this background right here because we want to have a, a preview so when the image takes they'll be able to see what the strip is going to look like over here. So we'll do copy and paste. Copy and paste can be your best friend. It can save you from having to do a whole bunch of work multiple times. Um, 
And the nice thing about this is when you do that, your graphic list is still the same, has the same name. It'll allow you to keep that same name when you do a copy paste. So um, now that I've created this one, I'm gonna do copy, paste, paste and do the same thing over here. We're just gonna move these down. And I don't need to change the, um, the color because these are actually gonna be used as um, a preview that you take a picture, it'll show up here. These are buttons, even though they look very similar, one of them actually has a graphic list in it. The other one is a booth command. So the next thing is we're going to click Add Photo, set it to Chroma Key, and we're going to do that same thing again. We're going to hold down Control and click on Graphic Ones. This one's checked. This one's checked and selected. Right click, make same position and size. And let's go ahead and Duplicate that two more times. Select just the bottom two. Move it down. And now because it's photo one, photo one, photo one, it'll take one picture and they'll all three update. We'll want to change those to be photo three and photo two. And we can go ahead and save it. We're not going to do anything with the background, but if you wanted to go and add a background, add what appears to be the strip as a guide, you can do that. But that should be functional at this point. The next thing we'll want to do is just to save ourselves a little bit of time, um, we're going to copy this graphic, the one that's behind our live view, using Control C. Then we're going to save it. So now we're going to go over to our print template. Click New. GS Demo 2x6. And because we, whoops. Make sure that is set to the correct orientation. Because we copied that graphic, I'm gonna just paste it, and all that work is actually done for us already. Uh, this will only work when you're creating the template for the first time. Once you save it, the uh, the list, uh, the folder path is in abridged, and the image is embedded. So you have to copy that graphic out before you save it for the first time. Otherwise, that won't work. Okay, So we'll click OK. And then copy, paste, paste. I'm going to show you a little bit different trick rather than just doing the, the moving them with the arrows. I'm going to click Add Photo. Chroma key. We're going to use that same trick, the make same size and position. But to make sure these are all lined up and properly spaced, we're going to select them all, right click, and align center. and space centers. Whoops. You have to have them all selected. Space equal centers. So you can see it just nudged it just a little bit. So now that we got everything lined up, we can go ahead and copy, paste, paste. This one's going to be photo two. 
in this one, photo three. And I'm changing the order of what I'm doing just a little bit, but the idea is this is uh, uh, the same thing that you did before. So in this case, I have photo two checked and the graphic selected. I made that mistake on purpose because if I were to make the same size and position, the graphic would then move where photo two is and we want the graph the the photo to move where the graphic is so you'll want to make sure this is selected and the other object is just checked right click make same position and size and same thing for number 3 okay and then you would add your your um, footer at the bottom, or if you want to do four images, you can do that as well. We'll go ahead and save as, and now when we select that, it's going to ask to update the number of photos because we are using originally a uh, single image template and we switched to three, but now when we start the booth, Okay, so here we are. We have a somewhat functional screen template. We can click on the buttons and the backgrounds change. There are a number of things that are going on that need to be addressed, like the, the white text on a white background makes it very difficult to read. Uh, we don't have a start button. Those are things that you kind of have to have in order for things to go well. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're actually going to fast forward to that point where things are looking a little bit better. If you stay with me, I'll show you how we got to that point. But what I want to do is function, focus on the functionality and uh, show you some things that you might run into troubleshooting wise. So let's go ahead and fast forward. And I promise we'll go back and I'll show you how I made that change. I just wanted to get to the troubleshooting part before we get into design. Because uh, that's actually what we're here for is the actual graphic list and making sure it works. So we're going to click edit and I'm going to show you a couple things that a lot of people will accidentally do and that will cause some uh, significant issues. Actually we don't want photo one. We want this guy right here, the graphic behind photo one. And I can see it selected. That's how I know that it that I'm choosing the right one. We're gonna um, make a common mistake. So earlier I had said it has to be identical, it has to be exact. Let's say you accidentally typed in backgrounds instead of background. Um, that would be one thing that might happen. Another thing is, let's say you misspelt it and left out the O. And we're going to save this as a duplicate copy. So we're not saving over the original. But let's start it up and let's see what happens. So we know this one's not linked anymore. So these are now changing. This one does not because the uh, name is not the same. So. That's the graphic list name on the actual graphic list. And on this one, the command is actually uh, trying to adjust a different background. So green and red work. When we hit purple, it does nothing because, once again, that link is lost. So it's real, real, real important. Otherwise, it won't work that the list name is identical on your buttons, your previews, and live view and also on your print templates. If any one of them is off, you're going to run into these type of errors. Um, so let's go ahead and fix those. And uh, So we're going to click Edit. We know this one's working. So we're going to copy it. And we're going to paste the name so we know it's identical. And Let's go ahead and try that on 
this one right here. Let's drag that into the right order. Um, we're going to run into a different issue in just a second, but I just want to show you. So go ahead and paste it and click OK. And it's going to give us an error saying that the name has to be unique. So how do we get these all to have the same name if it won't let us type in the name? Um, we were able to get it done earlier. So the trick for that is delete it. We know number two works. Or uh, So we'll just copy that one, paste it, drag it into the right order, and then nudge it into place. So now, when we test it out again, fingers crossed, everything's working just like it did before. So those are common things that you might run into. Um, that, that list name is crucial. It doesn't work otherwise. So now that we've gotten past that troubleshooting, uh, let's go ahead and see how I uh, made these changes, the, the background and the, the layout. Okay. So we'll exit, click choose. Actually, I saved us uh, another version unedited. So the first thing we'll do is add artwork, browse. I have some backgrounds that I just keep in a in a library folder. So there's that black one, and we'll drag it into place. I'm going to enlarge it to get rid of the little white lines on the sides. The next thing we're going to do is um, take these two, duplicate it, um, and then make sure it's just those two selected. Move it down so we can have our fourth one. And then we're going to Click um, Add Effect, and it's going to be set to color white, and that's going to be our paper background. Whoops, that needs to be set to 100% or 0% transparency. And using the scroll wheel just to make it a little bit smaller. That kind of looks like the shape of a two by six. We'll drag that into place. Make it just a little bit smaller. Center it up. Okay. And then we're gonna add text. And this is gonna be our account, or this will be our uh, instructions at the top. Add text. And 14 should be a good size. Go ahead and move it right up there. And then let's copy and paste that. Oops. I want to deselect it and then reselect it so we're only getting one. That's going to become our countdown. And this is going to become our instructions. Um, just so I can. Uh, Make sure everything's uh, spelled correctly. We'll make that eight and see how that works. I'll go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Let me go even smaller. Okay, 
next thing we're gonna do is let's turn this into a countdown and double click on that change the text for countdown we'll make it 100% and 50% opacity 100 points and 50% opacity so that you can actually see through it and this will be replaced with uh, the countdown and then I think the last thing we need now is a start button so we're going to click add shape and um, we're going to use rectangle with rounded corners and the text is going to be black because it's a white button and the booth command is going to be start session and we're gonna drop uh, we're going to add a, a, a shadow do it. negative 10 negative 10 and that's just going to add a uh, little bit of shadow to the corner you can see it right here and our text is uh, just a little bit too big that should be we'll go with and see how that works. That's a little bit small. Okay, I think we'll be good with 16, and we're gonna make sure it is set in the middle, uh, so the the text is right in the middle of the button. Okay, so that should do it. Uh, we've got a functioning green screen selection. We've learned how to use graphic lists in Darkroom Booth. Um, I usually try to keep these videos as short as possible, but this one was complicated. Uh, and I wanted to make sure we covered all the bases, and then I promised that I would show you how to do some design and layout that was less important with the functionality, but still important. Aesthetics are important. Um, that's what your customer sees. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time.